Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, wanted to make sure I kind of talk to you guys. Getting ready to get back on the plane and go to L.A. I landed last night, of course, after that loss, Miami loss. I was, I got to get better at that. I was in no mood to chat. I landed about 2.30, 3 o'clock this morning because you couldn't get out of Syracuse and back to Dallas. There's no straight through flights. I had to go through Chicago and then get in here late this morning. But, but I wanted to talk to you about that game. God, I was so broken. I was so hurt when I got home. I just wanted to lay down and try to misery it away. You know how you just sleep away the misery. And that, that's kind of what I did. Woke up this morning, got back into watching some football. Pissed them Houston Texans didn't cover that four-point spread. I needed them to cover that four-point spread. Ah, Jacksonville, they didn't do it. But that, that's another story. So I'm in a lose-lose phase right now. I feel like I'm in a phase of losing. So I have to do something to alter that. As a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about something. I'm going to do that Tuesday, too, when we do the live, because I found this interesting, right? I'm going through something emotionally. I'm digressing here, but I'll be right quick what I'm going to talk about Tuesday. I'm going through something emotionally, right? And I mention it, or, or, or I didn't even mention it. I know what I'm going through. I'm feeling it. And somehow it's showing up on my phone. And every time I'm trying to forget about it, something else shows up in the social media because my phone algorithm has sent it some of the things that I'm trying to forget about. So I know I'm sounding crazy right now. But say you're going through something emotionally with a friend or a loved one or somebody, somebody you love, and, and, and something's going wrong. And, and, and you you mention it or put it out or thought about it. I'm telling you, it shows up on your damn phone all the time. And then everything pertaining to it shows up on your phone. And so when you go through a hard time, then you're trying to come out of it and move on from it. It keeps showing up on your damn phone because the algorithm put, put, keeps sending it to the phone because the conversation's been heard by the phone or... I really believe the phone just know what you're thinking now. I saw something where they got that thing where you you could take it, hand it to somebody, hand it to somebody else, and then they could throw it on a phone. It's like their phone almost taking your thoughts. It, it, it's all getting amazing. This AI stuff is getting amazing. But I was just thinking something because I said to myself, I'm going to stop talking about it. I got to stop verbalizing it because my phone is picking it up and sending me the mess that I'm trying to forget. Like I said, I'm going to just forget about this issue I'm going through. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I got to retrain my brain because right now I'm consistently and constantly thinking about it and it puts a negative state. It's bringing up negative things on my phone. I'm pulling down negative things out of ether. So I want to forget about it, the personal issue I'm going through because I believe what I'm going through personally affects everything I'm going through. I just find myself losing. I lose minor hurricanes, and, and then I took the Houston Texans to cover that loot. So I got to switch the vibration that is around me right now, somehow, some way. And I'm telling you, the phone is part of the problem. What I've done now is everybody I send out things to, I did, I, I'm sending out like pet things, like puppy things, uh, uh, Cute little animal things. So now the algorithm can start sending me that good stuff that can put me in a good frame of mind and stop sending me the bad stuff that reminds me of the bad frame of mind I am in. Enough about that. We'll talk more about that Tuesday on the live. But I want to address what I saw last night in Miami. Man, first of all, I want to thank those dudes for just allowing me to be a part of what they did this year. It was an incredible ride. It really was an incredible ride. Watching those young men grow up. I watch them on the football field. Watch guys just, just become a man out on that football field. So, so it was incredible. Um, I want to thank them all for that. You know, I want to thank them for making me a part of it, man. Those guys, man, Elijah, Aurora, all those guys, man. X-Men X looking for me on the sideline, man. It, an old man like that admit the world to me. You know, it was my first Sunday off. Um, and, and the Cowboys didn't do well. My first weekend's off in a long time. The Cowboys didn't do well. Miami held it together for me. So yeah, I got to thank them. 
And I know we're all disappointed about the way this thing ended, but but I'm so proud of the guys and how they played. I was in the locker room after the game, and I, I wanted to go in the locker room because I know any stepping stone to greatness, it requires stepping stones. In the first part of it, sometimes, sometimes uh, at least one of the most important parts of it are the setbacks, because the setbacks pull, pull, pull you back, but also gives you the strength to sh shoot forward because you say this pain is so great, I can't bear it, I won't let this happen again. And I went in the locker room to make sure that that was, at least to try to identify if that is such the case. And it was the case. I saw those kids crying, those young men crying, and 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 I saw how important it was to them. And we came up a little bit, just a little bit short, ran out of time is what I like to say, ran out of time. But, but I, I'm so pleased with what I've seen from those guys. I'm so happy with what I've seen from my coach, Coach Mario Cristobal, man. And, 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 and we're on our way. We're on our way. Now, I want to give Syracuse all the credit. And, and it's another reason I waited. Because now I want to go in on something. I gave Syracuse the credit. Great job, Miami. Great season. But I want to go in on something. I be damned in all my years of watching football. I have not seen anything like this. I was saying, I told you guys, I said, I want Miami to play more zone, make people drive down the field. There are many opportunities, uh, penalties, holding penalties or something that will happen if you make them drive the length. Now, Miami did make them drive the length of the field. And they continue to drive, drive, and drive the field. Miami didn't really stop them. But what I found interesting was we never got any calls. I mean, I want to go back and look at the games. that you never got any holding calls with all these passing plays. That blew my mind. I was like, man, I, I see holding. We're yelling at the rough. Holding, he's holding, he's holding. We never got any calls. Now, I have always heard and heard people say, Oh, the script and the game is fixed and all that. I was like, shut the hell up. There's no way. There's no way because I always look at it from the football perspective. You know how hard it is to mess with the game in any kind of way? You got 53 guys. Who are you going to peg to go and try to mess with the game? And you can't get 53 guys to agree on anything. And if you can get them all to agree, you won't keep on. They won't all stay shut up. Somebody will find out if there's ever anything suspicious looking. There's no way you can fix these things. But I never thought about it from the other's perspective. And that's that rough perspective. Now, I'm not saying anything, but my job as an analyst is to analyze and to look in corners and say, what the hell was that? Now, you know, the ACC put out Prior to the game, the ACC championship, S S ACC championship game, SMU versus Clemson. They put that out before the game. Before the game. And then called and apologized saying it was a mistake. Now, had they put that out and said that it was a mistake, and then I watched that game, and don't say, how are they making all these drives? And you mean to tell me you don't see one holding in here? I'm watching this game. I'm on the sideline. You can call holding on a, on a mirror of plays or many plays. But none? You never got one? They just go keep. Uh, it, it was amazing to me. Made me think, oh, it expanded my brain. Oh, okay. So maybe it's not the players that you take and go try to make that work. Maybe it's the zebras. Because how the hell we don't get any calls blows my mind. How the hell the zebras don't make any one of those. It's, that's why I gave everybody credit before I started talking about it. Because I had to bring that up. I'll let it go. I'll go get on the plane, do what I got to do now. But peeps, I had to say that. It's my, my duty to say it. Get on and go look at that game again, and you tell me. Hmm. They made a mistake when they sent out Clemson, SMU versus Clemson. 
Did they make a mistake? Or did they have what we call in this business a Ferrodian slip? <laughs> did you slip and tell on yourself? <laughs> we'll talk about all this Tuesday in our lives. I'm going to keep watching some football today. Try to recover as I get on this plane. But it was a great ride, peeps. I'm sorry I wasn't strong enough to come to you last night. I'm still getting better at that. You know what I mean? Those raw feelings. And it's so funny. It's more difficult now. When I was playing, I had to do it. But it's more difficult now because I just don't know and my feelings, to just, it's harder when you're a fan because you can't do shit about it. You just got to watch it and hope. When you're a player, at least I can do something about it. So I'm still learning from the fan's perspective. We'll talk about that Tuesday.